After his older brother, Edward VIII, abdicated the throne in 1936, King George VI became known as the Reluctant King. George only reigned for 16 years, but during those years, he became one of the most notable monarchs in modern British history, not to mention the father of Queen Elizabeth II and the inspiration for the Oscar-winning biopic The King's Speech in 2010. Welcome back to Royal Living. Today, we're going to be looking at the weird things related to King George VI. Number 10. King George VI didn't want to be king. Now there have been a lot of talks within the royal family that nobody wants to succeed the queen after, you know, she eventually goes on. And you know what? We get it. It's hard being a royal these days, especially when there are a lot of age-old rules that you have to strictly follow. So, it comes as no surprise that King George VI had never wanted to be king in the first place. Although he was never meant to be one, it must have been such a huge plot twist for him when the odds had stacked for him to be one. George VI grew up very shy, and he was just fine living his life as the heir apparent to the throne, with the percentage of him being king dwindling as the years passed by. So when Edward VIII had brazenly chosen to abdicate the throne to marry American divorcee Wallace Simpson, it was something that he never thought would happen, but had no choice but to do. Number 9. King George VI Didn't Retreat During War Royals are bound to have extra protection and special treatment when it comes to extraordinary circumstances because they're royals. But one admirable thing about King George VI is that at the height of World War I, he did not retreat and instead decided to help out and defend British naval forces as much as he can. However, his fighting spirit and bravery were shown more during the Second World War, wherein he was already king at the time. He and his family were already under so much pressure to leave with many fearing for their safety right after the Buckingham Palace was bombed. But they refused. They stood their ground and promised their people that they would not leave the country under any circumstance. Number 8. King George VI made history while eating hot dogs. At the height of the Second World War, a country would have never survived if it did not have any sort of alliance with others. So, for a show of solidarity, King George VI became the first reigning monarch of Great Britain to have ever set foot on American soil. It was also something that he needed to do to boost his popularity as the new King of England. Now. Where do hot dogs come in place here? Well, former U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt and his wife Eleanor Roosevelt had a snack with the king and offered them hot dogs. The king enjoyed it so much that he even asked for more. Number 7. King George VI Had an Early Death King George VI became a beloved King of England, and it was pretty sad news when his death was announced. During the early 50s, no one cared how much you smoked, and King George VI loved doing it heavily, especially with the stress that he had to endure leading his kingdom during the war. In 1952, the king had been diagnosed with lung cancer, and he eventually succumbed to a coronary thrombosis in his sleep. He was 56, and his daughter, now Queen Elizabeth II would ascend to the throne at the early age of 25. Number 6. King George VI had a very strict childhood. King George VI's father, King George V, was known to be a very tough disciplinarian as a father. I mean, as if it wasn't already enough that it was already given that their childhood would be strict as royalty, it was even more strict having George V as a father. In a book called The Windsors by biographer Anne Seba, King George VI and his siblings could have already gotten punished by a simple clothing error, such as wearing the wrong kilt with the wrong jacket. With all of this being said, he developed a stammer and became quite the shy boy, which is why nobody had seen him becoming a king in the first place. Number 5. King George VI's real name is Albert. 
A lot of monarchs change their names when they eventually ascend to power because of a lot of reasons. For King George VI, his real name wasn't George at all. It was Albert Frederick Arthur George. And while there was nothing wrong with being a King Albert, there were a lot of controversies that surrounded his brother's abdication and his eventual ascendance to the throne. To ease it out, the then Prince Albert would choose his monarch name as King George VI to provide optics that he would be the one continuing his father, King George V's reign in his honor. It wasn't something that the public caught on with though, because everyone had mixed feelings about the royal family at the time. But to close families, friends, and allies, he would still be called the birdie they always knew. Number 4. King George VI was very sickly as a child. King George VI had a very rough childhood, not just because of a disciplinarian father, but also because he was very sickly as a child. Because of enduring so much fear, he had developed a stammer that didn't seem to affect how his dad was treating him as a child. He would have carried this on when he eventually became king and wasn't known to be the best public speaker out there. Aside from that, he had also developed chronic stomach issues and knock knees in which he had to take some medication and wear corrective splints so that they would be addressed immediately. Number 3. Despite that, King George VI was also very athletic. There's a huge irony to the previous one in which King George VI was very sickly because despite having all of those, he has proven to have been very athletic as a child. But it's not like he was an Olympic-grade athlete. It's just that he was a very sporty person as well during his youth. He was a competitor in the men's doubles tournament at Wimbledon in the year 1926, and he enjoyed his few stints as a sportsman there until news dawned upon him that he was to be the next King of England. Number 2. King George VI graduated bottom of his class. Now, it's pretty tough being a royal. We have to give them that. However, you can't say it's that bad because we all know there are a lot of perks that come with it. While many other students had struggled to be on top of the class or to even perform decently, King George VI did not have to. Or maybe he never even tried. At the Royal Naval College in Osborne in 1911, George graduated at the bottom of his class, but he had no problems getting into the next level in Dartmouth because he, who wants to leave a bad taste in the son of the King of England, right? There was also one time wherein he was still studying and his father gave him a favor by withdrawing him from college after his first year because they thought that George VI's skills would come in more useful in the family business, being a royal. But maybe he made up for it as king when he refused to leave the country when everything else was in shambles. Number 1. King George VI was good friends with former U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Remember that tour in America wherein King George VI eventually became the first reigning British monarch to have ever been there? The main purpose of his trip to the States was to solidify the UK's alliance with the United States as the war was eventually coming. With that, it had seemed to be more as the two national leaders had hit it off and became good friends as the years passed by. I mean, you guys fought wars and ate hot dogs together. What's more bonding than that? Do you know any weird facts about the late king? We would love to know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching Royal Living. See you next time.